We're rolling. Hey, what's up, everybody? What's Episode six. So, welcome back. Um, we want to, uh, as always, thank everybody for listening. Uh, we appreciate all your support online. Uh, continue to find us on social media: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. You can find us at Jujitsu Dummies. We actually uh, started a uh, a Facebook group as well, a little bit more like a forum than a, than a Facebook page. Go and ask your questions um, there. Yeah, go ask some questions, pose questions, say something funny, throw a grenade in there, <coughs> see what happens. Um, but that's the, uh, you can find that at Jiu-Jitsu Dummies Podcast is how you'll find the group if you search those words where our, our fan page is just Jiu-Jitsu Dummies. Okay, so again, uh, at Jiu-Jitsu Dummies uh, everywhere. Uh, watch us on YouTube. If you're looking at us on, the, uh, uh, on YouTube right now, uh, we'll, uh, you know, typically put, uh, hi everybody, we'll put, uh, we'll put uh, descriptions and links to Facebook pages and sponsors and things like that on screen as well. So if you're just listening to us on the podcast, check us out on YouTube as well. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We will get back to you. We will answer. If you give us a comment or review, we're going to, uh, we're going to let you know that we got it. Okay. Um, once again, Milton Campus, Purple Belt. Fight Sports Coral Springs, and you can find me at uh, Uncle Milty BJJ on Instagram. Uh, you can visit jujitsudummies.com to become a podcast patron or a sponsor. Uh, we'd love to have a gi sponsor, another shoe sure. sponsor, yeah. you know, yeah. any, you know, CBD, massage guns, all, all that stuff, you know, things yeah. that we actually use. Uh, we're all ears, guys. Tell us how, uh, how we could work with you. Um, if you, uh, uh, if you want to send us a question for the show, if you want us to answer a question on the show, uh, send it to info at jujitsudummies.com. If we use your question on the show, we're going to give you a $50 coupon code uh, for, uh, for a purchase, uh, for a one-time purchase on chokeresponsibly.com. Uh, and they've been a huge support uh, supporter of the show. Uh, if you go to their website, there's a podcast menu option. Just click on podcast. What type of stuff got, they got? They got backpacks, stickers, they got hoodies. T-shirts. They got, got t-shirts. t-shirts. We're going to be launching a kids' T-shirt. Uh, we got men's, women's, kids, mugs, T-shirts, stickers. Mugs. Those mugs right there. Yeah, <laughs> we got a big old sticker like this that you can put on your car. Actually, Check smaller, it out. but uh, it's there. Uh, I love the new backpacks. It's black and white, so really cool stuff. Uh, if, uh, if you just go to chokeresponsibly.com to make a purchase, uh, you can use coupon code DUMMIESPOD6 to get 10% off of your order. That's okay? perfect. Right. So uh, as always, uh, they uh, ship free in the United States. We're and still just... talking to that guy about the fifteen percent, right? No, that guy's an asshole. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> just try so and see if we can get we these do, folks. We're still doing ten percent off. All right, get cool. your hands out of my pocket. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, it's for the people, man. It's for the, it's, it's for the fans, man. I'm so doing it for the fans. We're doing ten percent off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> try, guys. Try. Pod, trying try for y'all. Six. <laughs> Uh, instead of 15%, it's always free shipping. So there come we go. On. Okay. Free shipping All in the right. United States. That sounds- uh, Choke Responsibly just added uh, new rash guards, right? So men, women, kids, uh, and actually like youth sizes as well. So like, I'm wearing a rash guard sizes. next episode. Are you? Yeah. Okay. I think I'll do there that. There you go. Let's go. We'll get it. Um, Fight Back CBD. They always give us a couple of bottles of CBD to give away to our listeners. So uh, we'll get uh, two winners from today's show or two people uh, will get <coughs> awarded bottles of CBD who have, uh, whose questions we're going to answer on, uh, on the show today. Um, check out their website. Go to their About page. Uh, they are uh, a huge part. Uh, they're active in the, in the substance abuse community, meaning that they're finding people that uh, could benefit from, from jiu-jitsu you know, to, uh, to, you know, as part of their therapy. Right? So uh, check them out. I'll kick I, I'm probably not doing them justice, but go to their About page. Follow them on Facebook and Instagram at FightBackCBD. Okay? Um, so uh, you're going to read off our podcast reasons. Yep. You, you know, we have a, do that. A, a patron system. You can give a couple of bucks and we give you a shout on the show. So take it All away. Right, good looking out to James Fisher, Brown Belt, Valor, BJJ, Ohio. Team Sean Hammonds out of? Mount, where's he out of? Or, Mount Orab, east of that, which is east of Cincinnati. Okay, we'll come check you out. Cincinnati, wherever Mount Orab is. We got to look that <laughs> up. But thank you, James. Good looking out. And then we also got uh, Chuck Redor. Chuck Redor has been a long time supporter of our from show, the right? From the beginning, from the beginning. Dropping Chuck, comments. What's up? Right? Who is Chuck? 
Uh, Chuck is a Filipino who's five four. <laughs> this is, just so well, there's some contact. Let's get some context. I ask <laughs> any of the patrons, hey, send me a little bit about yourself, and we're going to read it on on air. So this is what he Chuck, sounds Chuck like. A boulder is what he yeah, sounds he like. He does five four. Yeah. Five four weighs in at one hundred and eighty five. Good up Lord, to 200 dude. pounds. Yeah, watch out, and he man. He says he has no neck. I, I've seen him in some pictures. He got a little neck. He's got yeah. a little. Yeah. All tiny right, neck. good looking out. Blue belt out of uh, Gracie Kona Jiu Jitsu Academy in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. All right, brother Shaka. That's, Chuck, that's I where I would like to go visit. <laughs> I'm the guy answering place. on the other side most of the time, Chip. <laughs> yeah, I spent some time out there. I was in um, Kailua, Hawaii. I was stationed out there for four years. Oh yeah, really? Yeah. So when I first started start when I first started doing jujitsu. Um, it was McMap. We talked about this in another episode. And um, in Kailua, there was a jiu-jitsu academy there. Okay. Unfortunately, I was only there for a short amount of time. I probably only trained for like three months. Okay. Forgot everything. <laughs> but solid, that's where I think my first ground roots were, starting uh, jiu-jitsu in Hawaii. That so the, awesome. what, what's that McMap program? I've heard it a couple of times. I'm not sure that I fully, I really fully understand it. So it's basically the Marine Corps, Marine Corps Martial Arts Program is what it is. And it's um, it's a self-defense system. <clears throat> okay. So before McMap, there used to be what was called line, a line system. Basically, it was showing guys how to take them down the ground, stomp the head in. Right. And that's basically <laughs> it. There's yeah. no, we're not talking, right? There's okay. no talking. You, this is it. Okay. So McMap is something a little bit more friendly, okay. right, where you can work in a humanitarian environment and communicate with people effectively okay. with your weapon in your hand. Okay. You know, so gotcha. you have different levels. And then if people get aggressive, then you can combat that with throws, jujitsu type moves if you're on the ground to okay. defend yourself. So that's okay. where it develops. So it's jujitsu, judo, um, Muay Thai, a little bit of karate, a little bit of Hapkido, mm -hmm. anything that you can think of, it's it's in there okay. somewhere. Gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So our last patron Take it away. All right. CJ Carroll, uh, Roanoke Jiu-Jitsu, little hole in the wall. We got to go. Hey, little hole in the wall. So that was another place yeah. that I did some Jiu-Jitsu. Little <laughs> hole in the wall in Kailua. I wonder where that yeah. place is right now. Is but yeah, the name of it? No, it was a little. It definitely. You walk up. Hole in like the wall Jiu-Jitsu? It was kind of. That's <laughs> yeah. a good That's a good name for it, especially if you only have a 10 by 10 mat. TM. All right. 10 by 10 mat. All right. Where are we at? CJ Carroll, Virginia. What's important to know about him outside of his shout out that he can give? Yes. Yeah, so, right, what did he request? So much respect to CJ. He wanted us to shout out Mission 22, not just him. <coughs> uh, Mission 22 is a uh, a program for well, it basically helps combat veteran suicide awareness so, program, right? Yeah, awareness, so awareness program. program. They'll sponsor veterans, uh, help them get uh, uh, you know a, kind of a. a pay their their tuition yeah. to to a school and uh look we're probably not going to do it justice in, in just this intro so go to mission 22 on facebook or mission 22.com check them out they're doing some really cool things again shout out to uh, to cj okay um let's go around the table let, let me say first uh, on the last episode we had drew phoenix uh he was supposed to be with us again today uh he could not make it he will be on another episode where we're going to talk about jiu-jitsu and underserved communities and bringing jiu-jitsu. Yeah, he's got some good programs that. going on. He's awesome. He's an awesome guy. He's He's got some great things to say. And, he, and you know, he's a, a man of his words and uh, a man of his word. And, uh, you know, he's actually bringing jiu-jitsu into those communities and doing some really cool things. But um, we'll let him come back and, and talk to us about it. But he just couldn't make it here today. So uh, today we're going to go around and uh, we're going to do uh, kind of what got us here. We're going to answer some listener questions. Awesome. Uh, I think we're going to get maybe uh, try to get a little personal with each other here and, and uh, uh, introduce so, people, uh, learn a little bit, <laughs> learn a little bit, <laughs> learn a little bit more about us and uh, some of the things that make us tick. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously, as it relates to jujitsu, to, to jiu let's um, do that. Let's go around the table. Let everybody introduce himself. Name, rank and serial number. Raul Benton, uh, four stripe. White belt from. Uh, oh, you've been forgetting to say that. I have you? been. I have <laughs> been from uh, uh, Coral Springs Fight Sports. Uh, Felipe and Sofia Amarante. Very cool. All right, my Sir. name is Junior Junior Vega. I am a black belt. Is it with... Junior Junior Vega? No, it's is just it Junior. junior? Oh. It's actually Jamie okay. or Jaime. Oh, Jaime okay. from my Spanish. Right, I'm sorry, I didn't mean there. to interrupt you. Jaime is fine. <laughs> Jamie, but mostly go by Junior. Uh, you can find me, J Vega Junior at J Vega Jr. on Instagram. Um, I'm also a Marine Corps vet, um, paramedic, um, travel a lot doing work, so I try to get on the mats as much as I possibly can. Okay. That's me. International man of mystery over here. Young um, lady? 
I'm Janet. You can find me at Janet underscore JJ Dummies. I'm a fourth degree blue belt under Felipe and Sofia Almirante by Sports Coral Springs. Uh, I'll reintroduce myself because I am a uh, purple belt, Milton Campus purple belt. I'm a one stripe purple belt. Uh, I did miss our last promotion, so I think I'm being a little punished by not getting. But anyway, that's a whole other story. So I'm a don't show. Hey, you don't show. You don't get stripes, man. He made, he made a, he made a joke the other day. I said something to the coach, and he says, "You know that brown belt's getting really far away." <laughs> 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 that's oh. the only reason I'm bringing it up. Nice, nice. <laughs> wow. But uh, I have been a purple belt for two years now. July will be two years, or uh, the the end of this month, I think, is two years. So we'll say that. Hi, Philippe. Hi, Coach. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Professor. So, hello. Um, so uh, you can find me at uh, Uncle Milty BJJ. I also take care of most of the social media. Uh, I'll let these guys know if anybody asks them a question. But again, you find us at, uh, at Jiu-Jitsu Dummies online anywhere. And I'm usually the guy that's answering those questions. So we'll get back to you. So, uh, so again, sorry that Drew was uh, Drew couldn't be with us, but we'll have him probably on episode seven or eight. Uh, he'll definitely get back to him, get back to us. So, we're going to uh, try to get a little uh, personal here today. But why don't we start with the listener questions, and then we'll kind of All right, we'll see where it takes us. All right. Um, you didn't have your listener questions ready? I turned off the computer. I'll read the first one. You can get your questions ready. Uh, so we have. G Jax, it's G J A Triple X. Ooh, Triple X. Triple X. Okay, so I noticed BJJ can be pricey for some people. What do you think about local city recreational centers offering free jujitsu for kids in the inner city? How can this type of training help a child overcome their environmental situations and struggles? That's two parts there. So let's talk about um, the, the first part. Does anybody want to take that? Just. Uh, uh, free jujitsu for kids in, in, in like rec centers. Thoughts? Do they offer Anyone? that? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Do they offer that? Um, I'm sure they do. I'm, you know, uh, I, you know, actually, let me say, uh, we, I don't know if you know this, uh, I'm not going to give out his name. Uh, we roll with a black belt right now. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes and trains with us uh, primarily on the weekends for our open mats. Um, he is actually closing his gym. He has his own gym. He's closing his gym and he's moving into a, uh, he was supposed to be moving into like a rec center in a, at a church. Okay. Um, for whatever reason, I really didn't go that far into it, but he's going to be offering uh, jujitsu in a rec center. So, I mean, you know, look, it's not the, this was specific to the inner city, but listen, it's Coral Springs, Florida. It's not so much the inner city, but, uh, or excuse me, he's actually further, I think, either in Fort Lauderdale or Miami. So, um, but look, you know, it's a little bit more about who's teaching the jujitsu. If mm. it was free in a rec center and it was a white belt, I'd be a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should be. You know, uh, blue belt and it's free. Eh, still a little yeah, like, yeah. you know, who give me some more information. I think once you get to kind of purple and above, you can kind of say, OK, look, this is free. Let me see if this is something for me and then see where the journey evolves from there. You know, if you're talking specifically about putting a kid into it, I just stick around during class. You know, don't look at it as a daycare center, like drop them off and leave, uh, which in some academies is fine. But, mm -hmm. you know, go check it out. See how they treat the kids, you know. And look, it, this is uh, it's 2019. You can check out the coach online and make sure that right. everything's copacetic. And are they just teaching the jujitsu itself randomly? Or are we talking like an actual class that has the criteria in each thing? And is it also with the respect of the mats and your professors? And Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, yeah. How again, far into it, I yeah, suppose. That's, uh, I would say, um, again, and anybody can help me out here, but I, I would probably say you want to check out, a, you know, a regular gym and compare it to a rec center. Yeah. It doesn't cost you anything to go sit in a gym. You're, you're always going to be welcomed by the professor in, in most cases. Um, I, we've talked about that on, on episodes before where I really think that you need to be, you know, don't just go to one gym. You know, you should be checking out other gyms. It's okay to check out other gyms. It's okay to go to open mats in other places. But, you know, when you're searching for a place to do jujitsu, this is a very intimate sport. You know, we're laying on top of each other. We're being, we're putting each other in very weird and strange positions. You know, we are trying to manipulate joints. You need to be very comfortable with wherever you go. Yeah. So going mm -hmm. in and sitting on in a class, you know, our professor, uh, I make jokes, but mm -hmm. he's an incredible, uh, you know, instructor. Uh, and when he was on the show, he advised, like, go sit down, go take your kid, walk in, sit down and watch and uh, and make sure, you know, see how the coach treats the kids. You know, what's the dynamic? You know, is he yelling at them? Is he does he understand how to, you know, you know, 
come down to their level and talk yeah. to them. Does he know those basics of, of interaction? Um, you know, we, we see it all the time, like the fake black belt that's got a school, right? Those videos yeah. are like the most popular on YouTube. You know, that, you, know? You, have to, you have to set up some type of longevity. And I just think in a rec center, it might not be there. You know, mm -hmm. you, yeah. like, you could just throw a class together like, hey, I want to yeah. do a potting. I mean, how to yeah. pot some flowers, you know, yeah. and I'll do a class. It well, could that's be six weeks. That comparison class, to be 12 a, weeks, a black belt who's owned his own school, who's, yeah. who's closing, you know, to, to, you know, again, is it a white belt? Is it a, is it a blue belt? Yeah. you know that's never coached and it's just like i'm gonna open a school you know yeah so i mean you know it, you know you kind of judge them on an individual basis let's let's leave it at that and go check out a gym that you might have to pay yeah you, you know, want some legitimacy in the training that you're getting you know again jujitsu is not just a pop-up type of sport that you can just yeah. do at the mall you know it's yeah. like come to class at the mall it's not the way it works the other side of that question <laughs> is how can this type of training help a child overcome their environmental situations and struggles i mean that's a completely different question mm -hmm. uh, it was part of the same question but um anybody want to take that I, th I think there's a precedent for that because um that question almost addresses um the origins of jujitsu's growth right because um Back in the day, jiu-jitsu in Brazil was practiced mostly by people from environments that were underserved. The favelas, right? Yeah. That's really Absol where jiu-jitsu came from. Absolutely. Right? Fada, you know, cut his teeth on uh, his, his legacy is, is built on teaching people for, for free in poor areas. And even there was... Um, Oswaldo Fada, for, for, for those who don't know. Look exactly. And, and there is actually stories uh, of... Back in the day, people would look down their nose at people who practice jujitsu because they did come from the lower social classes. And then you talk to some of these guys now who are champions and, you know, world class champions and they have their own schools and they were those kids, those poor kids. And they'll tell you how jujitsu saved their life in those very dangerous environments in Brazil. So I think that answer, the answer to that question is infused in the history of jujitsu for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, we're all big advocates of jujitsu because we do it. Um, you know, I, Janet's probably the only one of us that's coaching kids or has coached children, right, at, at fight sports. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it, yes, can it help? Absolutely. Can it help over, help you overcome your environment? Absolutely. Um, it teaches you so much from respect uh, to, you know, how to carry yourself, how to talk to an adult, you know, how to have an actual uh, child to adult conversation, um, just how to treat your peers. I mean, it go, you know, just discipline it, it goes how to take care of yourself i mean you can go on yeah, a lot and of on. social um, skills that they can learn yeah, just by being skills. a jiu -jitsu, you know it's something that's and listen you know important. when you when you're talking about inner cities you know unfortunately it's a fact that you know there are a lot of children who just have a, a one parent home maybe it's the mother maybe it's the father more often it seems to be it's it's the mom and and a, and, a, and their her children um there might not always be that male role model for a boy or a girl for a, a male or female child so um you know, it's sometimes the jujitsu academy is the only place that they're getting that. Sure. Now, obviously, there sure. are women coaches and, and, and male coaches, but jujitsu is dominated is, is has been traditionally dominated by the by by males. So most of the schools just happen to be. Mm -hmm. You know, we're lucky enough to be in an environment where the it's a husband wife team. You know, you know Sophia maybe and, maybe and they Felipe. find a way to find more funding, right? How yeah. can we fund? more jiu-jitsu programs at a low yeah. cost to kids right. in the communities not yeah. not just like you're saying lower income communities because again it's just exposure those kids if they're not doing something right they're going to get in trouble mm -hmm. yeah right yeah. so if you keep them busy you give them some somebody that they become accountable to for their growth right i think drew kind of spoke about that in the other episode what we're losing is that connectivity right that tribe mm -hmm. yeah right that that mentality of being together and when you're around more people like what do kids resort to now? Being on their phones and, you know, playing video games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They can, they're self-sufficient in their own little space. But. Nothing drives me more crazy than my 15 year old. She I got one of the those. phone. <laughs> I got one of those. She walks around with the phone while she's doing her chores. She perched the phone on the windowsill. She's got the earphones, the head, but the earbuds in, not paying attention to anyone. And she's doing the dishes. But then she went to clean the counter. She takes the phone and she purchases it someplace else to clean the counter. Nice. Drives me nuts. So yeah, you know, you know, these devices are raising our kids for for the most part, and for a lot of kids, jujitsu is there. Yeah. Like sometimes, you know, hey, listen, they're getting this discipline there, but this hour, hour and a half, two hours maybe is the only time that they're not in front of a computer, yeah. a television, their PlayStation. You know. Well, so. I'll share my fifteen-year-old daughter's story. <laughs> Janet might want to share a story too. I don't know, but. My 15-year-old daughter story is 
how is it that you always, every time I see you from the moment that you wake up to you go to sleep, <laughs> right? You have your phone in your hand. I already know what But every going. time I call you, you don't pick nobody up. Answer. Nobody ever answers. Why is that? Yeah. And you I, always have your phone. That screen. happens with my 26 year old. Right? Are you kidding me right now? It does. That's not. <laughs> my 26 year old does that. I text her. How is it possible? I get a te I get a response three days later. When she comes to visit, she does not move without the phone in her hand. Exactly. Now, like and I do the same thing. If I don't text somebody back, it's only because I can't in that moment. But I don't wait three days. So it's just good luck, buddy, because it doesn't Priorities. get any better. It doesn't right? get any better. Yeah. You have how old's your daughter? 17. 17. She'll text me back. Oh, you see oh. mine. Because <laughs> she knows. She's going to go to oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> Don't text me back. <laughs> Mom goes on high alert. And then I start calling. Where are you? Why aren't you texting me back? Are you okay? Are you still alive? Are you, or just give me you a sign. answer quick that you're mm -hmm. alive because if not. Drives Mama me. Mama Bear is coming for you. <laughs> that, that, that's what, well, anyway, look. Jiu-Jitsu is great. We Can recommend I? it for all children. You should at least try your children, it's like you'd get, you know, if you lived by the beach, you would get them swimming lessons. You know, every kid can benefit from jujitsu every single day of the week, every time they leave their house. Can I also just add, you know, we were talking about how the kids learn discipline and the social, my gravy, talking with their other friends and everything. Watch your mouth, Janet. Sorry. Ooh, supposed to do that. But also they are getting um, new friends. Not just their school friends, but they're getting these friends as well. Mm -hmm. And sorry, Mauricio, I'm going to talk without you about you and your child. But he has mentioned before that Gabriel would rather hang out now with his jujitsu friends rather than his school friends yeah. because they just act differently. Sure. They're much more respectful and, and you have something more in common mm -hmm. on top of games and such. So they're also getting that great friendship. I'm not going to I'm not going to give a name not like Janet and outing people sorry Marcy. I am I am Gabriel. not going to mention the person but we have a very good friend well we we all know him whose son was getting bullied fought back against that bully in school that bully showed up mm -hmm. at our school is, is now trains at our school and they are now friends no way yeah, that's awesome. Way. Way. <laughs> that's a great story. It, it, that is, and uh, it, it would, it, right. yeah, right. That's, yeah. <laughs> got that that's good. That's it's good. an ABC <laughs> after school special. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is, that is a real you know. story that actually goes on, and I, the kid has been pointed out. And look, that kid is, it's funny because, you know, I see him, that, that, the, the kid that was the bully, I know the, the, the child that was bullied and he's like the most soft-spoken kid in the world. And then I see this kid leave with his parents and I'm like, this, this, these parents probably don't even realize that their son was the bully mm -hmm. in school, you know? Mm -hmm. and, what uh, sold him? Was it a double leg? Did he double leg him or what? You know, yeah, he, double, he, really? he double legged him, yeah. <laughs> you know, awesome. he clocked him too. Yeah, I don't want to go too oh, far in the story because yeah. then, then everybody will know who it is oh, and okay. that person will maybe there. get upset yeah, with me. But uh, yeah, it's... Uh, good, uh, you know, good job on a double leg. Yeah, yeah, he, he took him down and... Uh, and uh, yeah, it, 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 I can't go too far into the story okay, because okay, it's, okay. it will we'll out the person. I don't want them to be upset with us. But uh, yeah, look, it's it's you just is an incredible sport, and you know, like. But as a parent, it's nice to know that your your child could defend themselves sure. if necessary. Which, you know, every parent hopes that that never happens. But you have to be able. But to. it's nice yeah. to know. Mm -hmm. And even if it's not, you know, take. Double leg and punching and taking, but at least it's enough to get away. Mm -hmm. And that's really what matters, you know, yeah. do that. And not to get too dark, but here I go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, and I'm not an expert in it, but uh, a lot of around the country over the past 20 years, the school shootings that have happened are kids who were bullied, kids who feel defenseless in the face of, you know, constant aggression. And it, you know, culminates to the tragedy that is school shootings. Now, I'm not going to say 100% because I haven't researched it, but most of them are kids who, when you looked at their life right before the shooting, they were definitely on the lower rung, social rung of the ladder. And that, you know, there's a definite lack of confidence that, that happens when you're there. And I mean, if you can get into something that boosts your kid's confidence and at least moves them out of there, I mean, just the mental health aspect. Of I, think, that. I think the biggest part, like for, for people like that, 
what you just said before, where you know the camaraderie. Look, we're we're all friends because of jujitsu. We probably none of us would have ever met um, these kids. You know that somebody posted the picture of, of the kids bowling the other day, and it was like they posted in the in the fight sports group. Uh, these kids would have these kids. They're such different personalities. I really don't think any of those kids would ever probably be friends if they just met in school. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, yeah, you know, the jujitsu, the brotherhood, mm -hmm. the camaraderie, yeah, exactly. the sisterhood, the, you yeah. know, again, we go back to what Drew said on the last episode, you know, the tribe, we lose that, but we do have that little tribe. Yeah. I know when I don't feel good or I had a bad day, I'm like, man, and I'm not going to get to jujitsu tonight either. Oh, I got to figure out a way to get there, yeah. you know, and, and it's the thing that, that lets me, even like on days that we shoot, it's very difficult for me to go to jujitsu in the morning because we've got a lot of things to do, the setup, and 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 I like I went today. I, I have to. I, I I gotta I gotta make it because my day, my weekend, yeah, is gonna be completely different. And I, and I love the the open mats at fight sports. It just they're doing a family. We do, you know. I, I know. Yeah, you, yeah. You, I was you, there uh, two weeks ago. Maybe been in and out of town. Maybe, but like they yeah, really yeah. were pushing this, you know, family jujitsu, and it's incredible to be rolling with. Like, I love this, that vibe. Yeah, it's 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 been great. It's like the kids are on one side, and their parents are doing jujitsu on the other side, yeah. and then every once in a while, especially the older kids come over, uh, like uh, like Mauricio's son, he'll come over and roll with his dad. I get like the warm and fuzzies yeah, watching cool. him roll with his son. I mean, yeah. how cool is that? You know, yeah. that's fucking amazing. You know, so, yeah. so that brotherhood, that camaraderie is definitely something that, I, you know, we hear about these kids with school shootings. They're always an, an, an outcast right. or, you know, an outsider in, in some regard. And, right. and, you know, again, we're not experts, but we live, you know, right down here. We're all right around the, the yeah. to Coral Springs, Parkland area. So, you know, it's affected our community. So we, we do kind of know, yeah. you know, that kid was staying with another family. I'm not sure exactly what happened mm -hmm. to his to his own family. Right. The, I'm not sure if his parent, if parents passed, but he was staying with yeah. a, another family. I yeah. mean, right there starts to indicate that there were problems. Right. He doesn't have his own family to, right. to live with or go to. So, um, you know, jujitsu. Jujitsu. You know? Do it. But, yeah. Um, let's go into another question. Uh, uh, same, uh, same person from Instagram, Jay Jax. What do you think are the benefits of jujitsu for kids with ADHD and ADD? Oh, you know, I, and, growing up, right, ADHD hasn't always been around, right? I'm, I'm not sure when. You were was. hyper. Yeah, you were just yeah, hyper. hyper. Don't give him so yeah. much sugar. It was there. It That's just what wasn't it was, labeled right? necessarily. It didn't have a name. Mm -hmm. It was called give that kid a spanking. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> get the bell, get the chancleta, whatever, whatever, <laughs> right? Get something that that kid needs to get. Yeah. Wait pulled. until your father gets home. Right? Yeah. yeah. That was the worst. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a whole other, I think, subject. But, uh, again, you know, we're, we're saying the same thing. Yes, can it help? Now we're not medical professionals. Uh, but I do know there are kids. You probably could, you know, that there are hyper kids. We'll call them hyper. Mm -hmm. No, I think. Uh, it, I, I don't want to diagnose anybody. In, no, in, I, just, in I would class. say that as a kid, there's a lot of energy that needs to be expressed. Right. Yeah. And you have to find a way you have to give that kid an outlet. Right. How, what do you give him? Let yeah. him go run. Take him to the playground. He's going to have a good time. Yeah. But if you keep him sitting in the classroom. Bottled up. Yeah. Bottled up. Or you expect him, you know, expect him to be four or five years old and listen. That's why, you know, Felipe was talking about dealing with little kids is difficult because their attention span is so short. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. you can't get this three year old to do anything for 30 minutes. Hmm. Right. So yeah, anything more than forty-five, they kind of venture out, fade away. But like you said, during the school year, you have them sitting all day for an eight-hour day, mm -hmm. and then you go home, and then by yeah. time mom or dad or both get home and they're tired, mm -hmm. you know, just sit down and calm down. But they've been sitting all day too, mm -hmm. which yeah. a, would be a good outlet, you know, taking them to jujitsu. That's a full hour of movement. Joe Rogan talks on his podcast about. Okay, well, let's talk about adults for a second. You have a rough day at work. You come home, you sit on the couch, you grab a beer or, or a glass of wine, you watch some TV, maybe you watch the news, it's even more upsetting than your day was, and you do nothing to expend that energy, that stress, there's no release of that. Yeah. Whether it's jujitsu or go for a run or a walk, take the dog out, you know, go exercise for a half hour, an hour, you're not expending any of that energy. That energy is needs to be released. Yeah. So you've had a hard day at work. You're having a shitty evening. You're self-medicating essentially with that glass of wine, beer, or a bunch, right? Yeah. And that, that that never goes anywhere. 
Okay, now think about a child. Go to school, get bullied, homework, come home, mom yells at you, go do your chores. And that child never expels, expends that energy or that that stress. And, and a 15 minute recess is not going to cut it. <laughs> exactly. I okay. see that with my Is there even gym classes grandson? anymore? Do they do, they do gym then, down here? Do, really. we, do we have gym classes? I don't think so. Do you know? You have. Yeah, well, I know for a high school, it was like a, one year. Yeah, it's it's not just not your required. freshman year. I think they have, yeah, it's right? Like it's like an elective now. Yeah. <laughs> it is, and you know what? You can even do it online. So wow. really, you don't even have really? to do it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like I see it my grandson. He's 15 months, and this kid has so much energy. He does not stop moving, like not even for a second. He's mm -hmm. moving. He's not laying on the floor mm -hmm. crying. He's moving, right? So if we don't keep the kid busy by taking him to the park, letting him run around, he shouldn't have that energy that he can't expel any other way. And I think it just mm. carries on to the yeah. point where, hey, now you're sitting in front of a computer playing a video game. That's that's the only other option you have, right? But there's other things out there, right? Like soccer, you know, youth sports, right? But jujitsu mm -hmm. again, it's a good it's a good place to to grow up with other like minded individuals. Yeah. Right? And I think, you know, jujitsu is different too for, for kids because it's a it's a very personal sport. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's a combat sport where you're grabbing each other. So yeah. these yeah. little kids are having different interactions and kids that never touch each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. Maybe as a bully. Right. <laughs> you grab a kid who's never been touched before and you, you're able to manipulate that kid however they want. Right. Where a jujitsu kid has his it's used to being grabbed and he can defend himself based mm -hmm. off that. Right. They're more comfortable. They're more comfortable you know, being touched and hey, they can defend themselves and turn around real quick. And I get the, I situation. get the question a lot at work, like from like mothers and parents and they they ask about, you know, oh, where should I take my kid for jujitsu or, you know, what should I look for? And I just had this conversation with someone the other day and I said, you know, I always start out with like, where do you live? <laughs> yeah. Come to fight yeah. sports if you're close. Um, I do also, you know, how old is your child? And you know, I, you can tell I them now. Point them in the direction of the of a, finding a jujitsu, uh, excuse me, a Gracie bully proof program. Mm. There aren't many in there aren't I don't think there are any in South Florida. I think the closest one is like Melbourne or, or higher. I believe I could, we did we actually mm -hmm. went on a website yeah. and, and searched uh, from like the main Gracie site, and it actually gives you a, who like certified locations. There were none in South Florida. So, but the Gracie Bully Proof Program is an incredible program that teaches them how to use their voice before they ever teach them how to use their body before they ever teach them how to use their hands or touch another child. Mm. Like, you know, talking to an adult, don't touch me. And there's great videos online. Again, I probably won't ever do them justice, but yeah, um, that is the first suggestion I make to people when they ask me about jujitsu, especially for a younger child. This is the best place, especially like a three and a four year old. I think we've kind of talked about four year olds, probably like a good, mm -hmm. good gateway to start. But Imagine that child learning how to speak to an adult or speak to somebody who's trying to touch them in, in whatever way, whether it's another child or an adult. Yeah. Um, learning how to imagine who, when you hear martial arts, you don't ever hear anybody talking about, well, we teach them how to use their voice first. That's yeah. the most powerful tool they have, whether it's yelling or that's saying, true. don't touch me or I'm going to tell my mommy, you know, like, yeah. that, and that's an amazing part of the Bullyproof program. So, uh, you know, check it out online. But I, I, I recommend that. And, you know, listen, I hate to, I don't like to, you know, advertise for them because I, you know, I go to fight sports, but listen, that is probably the best advice for somebody who's, you know, looking to get their kid into jujitsu. Now on the other side of that, that program is very structured. And from what I understand, if you're going to have the bullyproof program in your studio, in your academy, you have to go to like California and get certified by them at, at the main Gracie location. Mm -hmm. I think where it's essentially uh, uh, Henner and Hedon, that there yeah. where, where they, where they have their facility with their dad. So, um, I think maybe that's why there aren't a lot of locations, especially here in South Florida. But there are tons of, of schools that have great kids programs, uh, including ours. You know, we have we have this we have the benefit. Our school has the benefit of having the husband wife team, and I think that makes a lot of parents very comfortable. It's not you're just showing up and there's a man. We have female coaches and we have a female black belt at the same level as her husband, mm -hmm. who is there in the facility every day. That's comforting, you know, for any especially. Uh, you know, mom or dad with a small kid, and I'm going to just leave my child here with, especially when it's like a little girl. I have girls, so I know it's like the first thing I'm thinking about, way too many men here. <laughs> yeah. Way too many men here. Yeah. You know, that's what I would be thinking. But to see, you know, a 
female coaches, a female black belt, and then, you know, staff and, and other children. I think that's extremely comforting. So, yeah. you know, again, it comes down to, you know, making sure that you, you know, you check out the gyms. But, um, you know, when, when people ask me where they should go or, you know, what should I do or yeah, but now you know Taekwondo you or Jiu-Jitsu, no, no, I you usually kind of start there. Tell them. Go to episode six, <laughs> Jiu Jitsu Dummies, because your question's answered right absolutely, there. Absolutely, absolutely. We just answered that question. I think we answered that in another episode too, right? Yeah, we, it, it comes up a lot. It. I mean, we, we get that question a lot, so you know, we'll keep on answering it. And I, I do like to get you know yeah, yeah. Uh, different perspectives. Uh, but uh, let's jump into the next question. Do you have it open? No. Hey, listen, yeah. my, but here's a, question, here's a question that I asked my daughter. What can we do to get more funding? Right? What, how can we possibly get more funding? to open up programs like that. But I guess it goes into, you know, who's going to run those programs then, right? When right. you do have the fund. I think yeah, one, one of the things than... that, that I want to do, and, and I think I, I kind of spoke to Bo about this, the, 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 the brains behind the camera over here, the creative guy, our executive producer. Um, I, I think we've spoken this, not at length, but we, we've kind of hit on it, where, you know, people have said, uh, you know, oh, raise money with GoFundMe for the show and to keep... You know, you got to kind of have some, there needs to be a reason. It can't be so, so hey, so I can talk about jujitsu. And one of the things that I had thought about was, and, and other people have done this, this isn't an original idea, but, you know, to do basically like scholarship programs for kids, mm. you know, where okay. I'll, we'll yeah. pay your first year, you know, so mm. raising money helps keeps the show on, but, you know, a big portion of that would go to, you know, sponsoring an athlete, sponsoring yeah. a child. Yeah. And, and, you know, is it an underprivileged kid? Is it somebody with a good story? Is it the A student, you know, the straight A student? Um, but, uh, you know, it was one of the suggestions that, that I had made. And I mean, that's one way to do it. Yeah, it's I think like, that's a good idea. Yes. Yeah, you know, it's you're awarding scholarships. And, and look, you know, we're in a place where we, I, I like to say we're in the Mecca of MMA. Yeah. specifically jujitsu but you know where you know there's uh, an american top team on every corner down here right. in, in a good way you know they're all over the place uh the main location is right here in coconut creek uh so um you know we have plenty of gyms that would probably say listen I, of course i'm going to teach a guy jujitsu especially if you're, if you're flipping the bill nobody's going to say no to that yeah. but you know maybe doing some type of scholarship programs and i know that there are others that exist and if anybody knows any any of them out there you know, post them on uh, on our Facebook or in the group or in the, in the podcast group. Uh, shoot me an email. Uh, let, let's talk about it. You know, but it was one of the things that we had thought about of, OK, what could we do to raise money for the show, That's but also do yeah. something okay. good with it? You know, so, you know, some type of uh, scholarship program for for, you know, specifically for kids. You know, Fight Back CBD does something for, you know, people with substance abuse. You know, not that they got that completely covered for the whole country, but that's something that they do. Um, you know, Mission 22 that we mentioned at the beginning of the show, you know, they're doing things like, it, you know, it's about finding, but we're talking about jujitsu. Well, why not help, you know, sure. people pay for it and find it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, maybe that's something that we can think about a little bit more and, uh, and, sure, and maybe yeah. that'll yeah, yeah. be uh, uh, the way that uh, we start to raise a little bit of money. You know, we'll see. Um, so before I go into the last question, uh, we talked a little bit about getting to know each other. Uh, and I talked to Raul even before the show, you know, mm -hmm. said, uh, you know, do you mind getting a little bit more personal with uh, your medical issues? I know mm -hmm. that I I'm okay with it. I had a heart attack a couple of years ago. June was my two year anniversary. Uh, but Raul, uh, before I even had my heart attack, you had a, you had a transplant. Transplant. Kidney I did, transplant? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. What, what did they transplant? <laughs> so uh, yeah. So um, the it all started with uh, I needed a kidney transplant. Um, my grandfather and my aunt passed away from it, so it runs in my family kidney issues. Um, and so in '05, they um, my brother gave me a kidney. Which oh was wow! Cool. Um, it was kind of weird because. His blood, we found out his blood type was AXB, which means it's two different blood types coexisting. It's not a combination. And they were thinking that he consumed his twin in the in the embryo. So it was a oh, really wow. weird situation. Ooh. Anyway, that has nothing to do with that's anything. Another, that's crazy. That's, another another episode. that's a whole other episode. Whole other episode. Whole other episode. Bro. I didn't want to get that personal. Jeez. <laughs> no, no, no. Wow. I wanted to go deep. I went embryo <laughs> deep. <laughs> I went into the cells. Anyway. Anyway. But um, yeah, so so that happened. Um, and that <laughs> so that happened. So that uh, there's that. So <laughs> it, it, you know what's funny is that really it really shifted a lot. Um, my wife will tell you. Um, uh, I had just gotten out of the Marine Corps. 
Uh, I was so running, this is how many years ago from now? This, this is 05. This is 05, okay. Well, I got out of the Marine Corps in 01, but I didn't get the, the surgery until 05. So it's kidney failure? Or is, kidney it, failure. is there a name for it? Is, there, is it a disease? Yeah, it? it's uh, at, uh, FS... No, NS, N, NF, I don't know. It's not, I have no idea what it is anymore. It's been years. It's been almost 20 years I've been dealing with it. Uh, Lonzo Morning also had it, um, the same exact one that I have because there's multiple kidney diseases that uh, occur, and he, I have the same one as him. Uh, but it's, it just they just slowly degrade and stop operating, uh, and you usually inherit it from your family. So is two kidneys failed at the same both, time? Yeah, both of them. So if... Does one kid can one kidney fail and you're fine with the other? Uh-huh. If it happens yeah. that way, okay. If it happens, but you had way. double kidney oh, failure, right? Okay. Exactly. So um, prior to that, you know, I had just got out of the Marine Corps, uh, running three miles every morning, uh, five miles every Saturday was normal for me. That completely changed everything. Uh, you start to realize and appreciate the organs in your body and mm. how they help, and just a regular day, just walking around, breathing, and just functioning. You, you don't realize the miracle of that every day. Are you yeah. had kidney failure just from one moment to the next? or So it was diagnosed in 96, actually. Okay, so you knew it was a... It oh, was yeah, a that's what got me out of the Marine Corps, actually. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I was medically retired. Uh, and so fast forward, 05, um, just went to Connecticut, came back down here, discovered jiu-jitsu for real. Um, the first school I ever had gone to. So, the, excuse me, the failure was when? 05. 05, you have the The, the failure was in 96, I had the transplant in 05. Okay, all right, okay. And so then, you know, life went on, you know, um, and discovered jujitsu. And I don't even remember what year I started, 16, 17. Uh, and, you know, it was like almost like joining the Marines again. You know, my memories of being in the Marines was, you know, if I if I live to be a million years old and never have another fun decade, I'll look back at my decade in the Marine Corps and be like, I lived a good life. And I rediscovered that when I joined Jiu Jitsu because there was that camaraderie, you know, and I think that, you know, there, there's such thing as camaraderie going to school, right? Just going to academic school or working together, right? But there's a different kind of camaraderie when all of you suffer together. Mm -hmm. You know, when you (laughs) when you when you question whether you're going to get out of a situation alive together, that's a different kind of friend. That's a different kind of uh, comrade. Uh, And I discovered and I found that in jujitsu as time was going on, they found that the kidneys that they left in me because they just transplanted a kidney in me and left my old ones in there. Were becoming cancerous. Stand, that's standard operating standard. procedure. That's the way it was done back yeah, then. Right? Exactly. So it wasn't and like, to, and to hey, we forgot to take him out. No, it wasn't no, like well, that. No, no, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the way this was. Right. Okay. Exactly. Just, to, just so everybody understands. Exactly. Uh, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nephrologist, but I understand that in order to transplant it, they transplant it in the front. In order to take him out, they take him out from the rear back then. So it would be two surgeries. It would, it, there's just no point in it. So they just leave the old ones in there to atrophy. Okay. Uh, but what happens is that they almost always get cancerous. They, they expect that later. Um, wow. So let me go back a little bit. I had been going through jujitsu for a long time. Uh, and then that surgery happened. Mm-hmm. And this is now your training with us at Fight training Sports. Training with you guys. Fight you Sports. came in. You didn't Having come in necessarily time. with a with an issue you didn't know about Not the cancer yet. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. And we, I was we fine. were training with you. I know you were supposed spazzy, to. Were you a spazzy white belt? In the beginning, I was. Yeah. Yeah, this is a different kind of spaz at your size, though. What kind of spaz? At at our size, I should say. Well, I I, I was, but I rolled with this guy a lot, right? Which was a nightmare. It it just is a nightmare Um, because he didn't. Can you can you elaborate on that, please? (laughs) So (laughs) I'll say that I'll say that there were you know. The Bible has four horsemen, but there were three horsemen in my life. <laughs> there was uh, Milton. <laughs> there was. Uh, you mean I, Uncle Milty BJJ? That's yeah, yeah, Auntie, yeah, Auntie, Auntie Milty BJJ. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> I don't know where this is going. Man. There was. Um, I forget his name. His name was Carlos, the nicest guy in the world, but man, he would brutalize me. 
and uh, and there was another individual. I completely forget his. I, I feel so bad that I forget John Carlo. John Carlo. John Carlo is the guy. John Carlo is the guy. John Carlo. He was yeah. merciless on me. Yeah. Um. Very and strong, there, very and there was this other. And there was a. There's this other one guy. And I and I point the three of you out because <laughs> it seemed one. like because of my size, yeah. they were defending themselves like against a mugging or something. Like that. <laughs> like, why are you guys hurting me like this? Anyway, I say all that to say. <laughs> My goal in jujitsu yeah. was not to chew, to choke anyone out, to submit anybody. It was literally just to survive those three. And was the other one the guy that everybody calls ouch? No, no, he not was ouch. Actually, very gentle. Guys. Um, with it was his his knee on was chest. actually married. He moved away. He's a real nice guy. Facebook friends, and I, okay. I feel like a monster forgetting his name. Nicest guy, but he was not nice. Rolling. <laughs> um, anyway, I say all that to say that um, you know I had made you know. A lot of milestones in jiu-jitsu is the greatest part of my life. And then they found that the the cancer in my kidneys, uh, yeah, one of my kidneys, I went through the surgery. It was suppo- It's supposed to be, and it is, very highly advanced and robotic and all that. They use a robot to go in there. Got the kidney out. You know, no cancer whatsoever. Everything's great. Um, I had never gone through anything like that in my life. In fact, even the kidney transplant, which was way more invasive, um, I was up and walking and touring Nashville seven days later. That's how quick I healed from it. And, you know, it was fine. So I had never had a precedent in my life of going through a surgery and that deep healing that has to happen. I'd never Long experienced recovery that. recovery time. Exactly. So I, the doctor said, hey, maybe you might wait. It was December. He said, maybe you might wait, want to wait until April to start rolling in jiu-jitsu again. And he happened to be a, a jiu-jitsu guy. Yeah, he, a practitioner, day, right? Is, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The doctor. The doctor was. Yeah, my surgeon. Yeah, yeah. My surgeon. Um, so he knew. He knew how. Oh, absolutely. The stresses he, on the body he, and he exactly understood. Exactly. So. Okay. And how much time you did not want to have to take off. Absolutely. And he understood that. <laughs> and he said, it's very imperative that you don't start again until April. He rules in Miami. Um, and, but I still had not healed. And I had started going back to fight sports in April, May. And around May, I felt a pain that wasn't like a pain, you know, there's, there's different kinds of pains, right? Yeah. There's when you're running, when your heart's about to blow out your chest, you push through, there's, you're doing a hundred burpees, just keep going. You know what I'm saying? There's mm-hmm. such thing as that. And then there's, you know, like you break your finger. There's no pushing through a broken anything, right? Yeah. There's no pushing through something tearing inside of you. Something's it's, not right. right. You, you know, it's like where you kind of freeze and your eyes open wide and like, all right, all right, just chill, just chill. And uh, that happened. And I feel like I remember when you, uh, there was a time when you came in yeah. and you looked like you were sick. And I yeah. asked you, and you were like, yeah, I'm just kind of feeling a little on the weather. You, I think you blamed it on work. But then For you sure. were like gone like a couple weeks after that. Yeah. And then like, I was like, where's Raul? And, and you yeah, went around. Absolutely. I, I think that I, if the timelines, I think that's kind oh, of absolutely. what happened around that time. And there were definitely red flags happening as I was rolling in times before that. And uh, I didn't listen to it. And I just kept pushing through it and uh to the point where i got injured bad enough i had to literally just completely drop out okay and um uh and you know luckily i have friends that i that i do roll with who are in their own schools um you know i just kind of do it on the off time but because i didn't respect that it literally took me out of the game for a long time you know uh so um, I think the past four months is the first time I've felt 100%. I've even tested myself. I've done some workouts, some extreme workouts, some core workouts, uh, and I don't feel any of that, you know, none of it. So I'm ready to get back in it 100%. So, so let's go back because we kind of jumped ahead, if you don't mind. Yeah. We, so you find out that one or both have cancer? One. One of them has cancer. So there's still another one still another there, one and it can there. still become cancerous and as well. Then, okay. So they took it out. Prognosis is oh good. no yeah, I mean, you're, yeah. You're good in fact um, like if if you never had uh, kidney issues they would have left it in almost anybody's body it was like barely perceptible in in the in the you know when they looked in the cat scan and all that um, but because I had had uh, kidney issues before even you know to me it was different you know like one millimeter was enough to take it out they would wait for a healthy person. Five millimeters. They they would have waited. You're the saying doctors. five millimeters of uh, uh, a lesion, like lesion, lesion. Oh, okay. cancerous okay. lesion. All right. Yeah. Um, but because of the fact that I already had kidney issues and a new, um, you know, a foreign kidney in my body, they took it out. You know. 
pretty early, pretty fast, you know, which, you know, I, I trust what they said. And, you know, at the end of the day, when I look back, I should have listened more to my body. You know? Yeah. I think we've all gone through that to a degree, but uh, yeah, um, I definitely paid for it. And so now I got to gear back up, get get back in the fray. Uh, but, you know, I definitely wanted to uh, to uh, not experience that tearing feeling and like they yeah. were deep in the body. That just felt weird. So and, when are you coming back? When are we going to see you at Fight Sports? I know that you have some friends that you train so with do, in other and, places. But that's but. extremely inconsistent and inconvenient because it's far away. Okay. Um, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk to Professor uh, he's already talked to me before, but talked to professor about starting open mat and then getting into the curriculum full time. Okay. With us again. If I, with us again. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's just nowhere that's, else. That's yeah. Okay. Right, yeah. Cool. The only way I'd go somewhere else is if I moved out of the state, you yeah. know, out of the area, you know, um, but, uh, which we yeah. won't, we won't allow that. You can't go. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go well, I appreciate, uh, you know, I, we've talked about it a couple, well, we've kind of danced around it a couple of times, mm -hmm. and I wasn't sure if it was by design, on purpose, or we talked before. Oh, no, no. You know, I asked you. I have a tendency okay to, to bore myself when I talk, so a lot of times I don't go into things. You well, know? you're basically on a talk show now, so oh, yeah, 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 this yeah. is, people want to hear an hour of talking on their way <laughs> Absolutely, morning, absolutely. So, so you're in the right place. So, yeah, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, I, I won't go into my whole story, because we, we, we don't have the time, but... Uh, I do understand you just said at the end there not uh, not seeing the signs. You know, my signs were running up the stairs at work. And I'm like, ah, I just got to lose a few pounds. Getting up to the top and being winded and then just telling myself, yeah, I just probably got to drop about five pounds. And I, and I wasn't listening. I, who knew? Mm -hmm. 44, right before my 45th birthday. And I'm not thinking heart attack. I'm right. not thinking heart problems, you know, or right. clogged arteries. You know, stopped eating fast food years ago don't drink soda only eat chicken and turkey so yeah so you got to listen to your body so yeah. uh, i'm glad to hear you're okay man i can't wait to mm -hmm. have you uh have you back. Oh, back yeah i can't wait to be back yeah man yeah so, just just to say though I, can i just say because i did comment on the the three horsemen oh yes yes i wrote that i wrote down here defend myself <laughs> because we're going to talk about that no, <laughs> you're no. not getting off that easy <laughs> no I, I, well, I just want to give a, a shout out to our resident black belt because um uh, everybody I rolled with, I learned so much, but I really, really enjoyed the uh, the when we roll. Uh, <laughs> the the patience be, that you, it has experience. nothing to do that's with the fact that you're half his size. This no, no, no. Nothing to do that. He's got five kilos on me. <laughs> no, no, no. The, the the patience that you show when you roll, and that's if wherever wherever you happen to roll, whether it's at our our school, wherever, if you ever have the opportunity to roll with uh, Junior over here, uh, you will walk away from that roll, no question a much better practitioner uh Thank you, brother. i, I really enjoy your, your patience and uh, the yeah, time it took sure. yeah especially during my spaz times um, <laughs> I, I appreciate that <laughs> so no, i think uh, yeah so for like you were saying i think just because of the size difference we probably rolled a dozen times yeah if that yeah but not like consistently no 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 i'm, I'm no. probably like 160 right right and i haven't been too much heavier than that for a while and you're right. what how how what are you in at? Kilo wise or? Oh, no, no, just pounds. 260. 260. So yeah. that's, a, that's a huge difference. Huge difference, so. yeah. And I gravitate towards the bigger guys. Yeah, and it would only make sense. Yeah, there. because I don't like being too ginger all the time. You know what I'm saying? It's just aggravating to death. But it is good because they're more, you know, they quit, they move quicker. Yeah. So I, I get a different perspective, but I, I like rolling with bigger yeah, was, guys. So. If, I, if I'm going to roll with a smaller guy, and, and now this is kind of my default setting, is I'm going to let them attack. Yeah. I'm going to let them work their game and, you know. I can work on my defense. Right. Because there's honestly, I'm, I think I'm usually the biggest guy there at, at about 225 to 230 at any given time. So there's not usually, I think uh, Demetrius said he was like 200 pounds today. I Is he? Like, oh, didn't think he was that heavy. Is yeah. um, Ru Russell? Oh, Russell, yeah, he has been, he has been around. Oh, for big Russ, man, yeah. he was a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like Alexis stood up and three hundred. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that? Like Alexis <laughs> stood up, <laughs> started rolling with it. That guy was monster. That was a monster. Yeah, no, he was a really big dude. But yeah, I mean, usually I, I think I'm at least the heaviest. I mean, I'm not the you know, well, the tallest, but the most built or the tallest. But I'm, I think I'm usually the heaviest. I can't think. So I have to with your skill. I, yeah. Well, well, I'm still getting there. You know. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, like I, I definitely play, we talked about this on the last episode that uh, we have this uh, a large pool of white belts now. 
So, I mean, it's taught me that patience. And, and I love to teach, obviously. I love to talk and I love to teach. And I love, you mind if I tell you something? And, you know, get into that with somebody. So now I'm like, ah, listeners, <laughs> people to yeah. listen to me. Yeah. And they kind of have to because what are they going to tell you? No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so so I, I, I do love that part of it. I love like, hey, let me teach you this. Or if I keep on getting them with the same thing or like just, you know, a transition or a pass, I'd like to teach them how to defend it. Do you wait until you're on mm-hmm. side control and make them listen? <laughs> yeah, you're going to hear most this. Of, most of the time. No, I, I usually, I, I'm with the, especially with the white belts now, again, you know, leave – you know, the higher belts, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to roll a little bit harder from my level and above. Typically, regardless of size, because, mm. you know. It's just, no, I you think know, you should. You've rolled, you you rolled, yeah. rolled pretty hard. As a matter of fact, I've said it before, like, you know, you love to joke around. But as soon as we slap yeah, bump, no. there's no. And I like to talk when I roll. You're not like that. I like to talk and maybe joke around. Like, you just did something and I like to make a joke. You're all business. No, I don't. But it's the second after, we. Junior's pretty obvious. Yeah. Then when you stop, you stop. You stop. You yeah. Stop! You shake hands, and he's a different person again. Can I say the very only thing, the only thing I see different about myself when I roll? That's just the way I roll. I roll mm-hmm. quiet. I don't talk. That's always been the way I've done it. Mm-hmm. But I will catch myself laughing to myself. Yeah. About something <laughs> stupid that I did. Like man, that was really stupid. And I will just laugh as I'm rolling. You know, and, and we're definitely. I'm not sure if we all do that, but I definitely. I'll laugh a lot. I I I verbalize yeah, I everything. You. I can hear you on the other side of the map. <laughs> wow. But, I, but that's, you know, well, number one, even though, you know, our coach, uh, Professor Felipe, is always, you know, he'll joke if we're talking too much. Yeah. If you're talking but you're rolling, you know, right. he's not saying anything to you. If you're just talking and teaching, yeah. he'll tell Using you. Using it to take a break. Yeah, save it, save it for Facebook. Yeah. But so I, I, I do kind of feel comfortable in being able to joke around because, yeah. you know, he likes to joke around. When I roll with him, it's almost it's always business. somebody's left. La- no, no. No, really. No, I I'm probably talk the most with him. Oh, God, oh, don't do that. What? You know, oh, I'm not going to pay you this month. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I I I like to play around. He likes to play around. Yeah. Um, as long as you're still going hard. Yeah, I, I you? you know I don't think that he loves that I like that I play around back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know he's up here, I'm down here. For sure. I should be listening more than I'm speaking, uh, but I don't. <laughs> Can I ask a question to Jenny? Let me ask you a question. Uh, you so you've been doing it for a while. How have you years? have you changed for about four years? Four, four years. years. Have you noticed a difference when you're walking just out and about in the world and there is a guy who, you, you know, a complete stranger. Um, are you less physically intimidated since your training than you were before? Is there no difference whatsoever? Do you not even think about it? Or Keep in mind you are answering for all women everywhere. <laughs> everywhere on the planet. <laughs> well, um, the same rule that I tell my daughter, I use for myself, always be aware of where you're at and who's around you. Um, you, you know, she does not anymore, but she used to walk home from school. But, she, you know, they, the girls, well, mm-hmm. all the kids, they have the earbuds in. Mm-hmm. They're more here on their phone than anything else. Yeah. And I told her, when you're walking, you, your eyes are up. Yeah. When you get home, then you can do what you want on your phone. Yeah. But while you're out and about, you need to be paying attention to that silly thing here, this person there, yeah. that car that has gone by twice and now mm-hmm. looped around for the third time. Because that. And so I've heard that if if there's somebody coming at you, the more eye contact, like I'm looking at you, I know what you wear, about how high, you know, your height, your weight. Mm-hmm. That's what's more intimidating for that person because they're like, sh- they're surprise. aware. The, 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 I'm going to leave yeah. that person alone. They lost the element, surprise. Of surprise. element of surprise. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So even if I've never trained a day in my life, I've always eyes up when I'm out. But do you feel more comfortable now? Can you, know, now can I you feel, think back and go, you know? Well, funny, because, you know, back then before I started training, you think, oh, I would be okay. Four years now into it, I think I would have died. There's no way. He's going like survive you, somebody grabbing There's you. no way. You know, if I could fight myself, like myself now, four years ago, I'd probably not be very nice to myself, you know. And we have a new, <laughs> we have a new female now. Um, and she said the same thing. I used to get in fights all the time. She goes, but now rolling with you, it's the, I thought um, I knew something. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. What I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. Right. Now, right. now I know what I didn't know. Right, like, right. Uh, it, it, it's follow, right. Follow me on yeah. this. Like, the longer I train, the more I realize, oh, shit, how much I have to learn and right. like, how much I don't know. And it's right. like, you know, sometimes the guys that, you know, maybe I submit or maybe – 
beat up or again four four horsemen your thing what you said before <laughs> the guys that look at me like that yeah like they don't understand like i have the black there are men right. that are doing that same stuff to me you know like exactly. professor right you know handles me right uh i, I forget his name carlos carlos who's yeah. a, a black belt that comes and trains at our open mats he handles me i mean and he tell like he tells me oh like i'm gonna like usually after but he's like i practice this on you like <laughs> Yeah, you know wow. when somebody tells you like, "Hey, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm practicing this on you because I know you." I'm you know, gonna be, you my know, favorite you get it? thing, my favorite thing, like, rolling wow. with Sophia is she'll go. I wasn't using strength. I was trying to use technique. My ass Ooh. is on the mat. <laughs> that was everything I had. You know what I, I think had. is the demoralizing yeah. line is when you tell yeah. somebody, "Man, I haven't hit that move in a while." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you're laughing to yourself. Oh, that's why I am now because Wait, like sometimes I'll say, I'm like, oh, I, just, I have, I have, I, a, I have a really good one. Let me see if I Thanks remember this. So last week, white belt, uh, he has, I, and I think he's going to listen. So I, I say this with much respect and I think he's a great guy. Yeah. Uh, he says to me, uh, uh, he's a white belt. Uh, uh, he was in the army. He's done a little bit of training, I guess, maybe kind of, I think like we your, spoke maybe yeah. he did some combative. Yeah. 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 He's done some stuff. So, uh, he's definitely, you could tell, this isn't his first rodeo. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, he's, he's a white belt. And we finished rolling. And I, I guess we didn't partner up with anybody else. And so we were going to roll again. He says, uh, he says, hey, uh, do you mind if I go a little harder? And I'm like, like, I went, you know, like, pretty hard letting him do his stuff. And he's, he says, you know, like, 90%. And I'm like, how much were you going? He was like, yeah, I was doing about 50. And I'm like, this son of a bitch. Like, <laughs> is, he, he's, is he telling me he just took it easy on me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because that's what I'm hearing. Right. Yeah. I'm like, here, I'm like, I didn't say this to him, but I did. I said, how hard were you going? He says 50%. And I was like, okay. I'm like, you can go 100%. You know, go 100%. In my mind... I'm like, I want to fucking choke this guy right now. Did he, you have to is he telling me, like, I just took it he, easy on yeah. you, Grandpa. He's a little bit younger than me. Uh, again, love him. He's a really great guy. I, I actually see him being a he, – he will be in this crew one day. He's, yeah. he will, he's like, a, just a really nice guy. He's got a daughter that trains there as well. Super sweetheart of a guy. Um, but then we rolled, and then, like and, – and, and he has he has also in the past, um, when I do submit him, he'll look at the clock, and he's – he's telling me how much longer he's lasted but he's not realizing that like you know listen i'm not being cock i could have lasted submitted like you 50 times it took five minutes i'm to letting him instead oh. of three yeah yeah he's right. like i lasted till like oh look there's only a minute left in a six minute roll you know so okay and, so i'm kind of putting all this together so i didn't take it as cockiness i think in his mind he really you know, like hey he, he survived lighter. he survived he said, I want maybe so he's gauging it that way you know he went 100 he went you know he went 100 percent I submitted him in probably less than a minute, maybe even less than 30 seconds. And, we, you know, submitted him, kept on rolling. We rolled yeah, for a full yeah. six minutes. And at the end, I said, you were better when you were rolling 50% because he got spazzy. He yeah, got spazzy. But fast. I think he learned, you know, I didn't get too what much. Say, into, what did he say from that comment? Uh, you know, I, it, there was a lot of smiling. He <laughs> smiled a lot like, wow, that was got me you know like, like yeah <laughs> but uh yeah i don't know exactly we, we did i didn't conversate with him a lot after because okay, i was okay. just like in my mind though all right i'm gonna gonna yes, submit him yeah. fast just to and and he, and he really did get spazzy so actually his 50 percent was better than his 100 percent because all he did you know came at me so hard that he gave me so much more oh, to, yeah. to, to to catch so but i just thought that that was funny he was like that is fine. yeah can i just can i just tell you really fast that mm. i don't i don't know if I will ever be to a point where if I was out and was attacked that I would be able to just annihilate the fella, let's just say. But I don't I don't <laughs> want to ever try she's that so out. Nice, either. Even when she's fella. talking about being attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. I don't think that I would ever really be able to take somebody out, but I'm not really trying to either. Mm -hmm. But I do think that now, like today, if leaving here or something, I think I don't know if I would be able to get away, but I definitely would be able to put up a fight. Yeah. At least maybe even enough that the person would be like, screw this. Yeah, yeah. And that's that was fine with me. Yeah. That my would my be fiance asked me that question yeah. a lot. Like she says, because she does, you know, she does the kind of cardio kickboxing, kickboxing. I, I like to call it dance fighting just to mess with her, but <laughs> oh I have total God. respect for it. It's great. She, I, I, I love that she does it. So um, 
she she asked me a lot, like, do you think, you know, especially when I'm showing her like a you know, maybe like a video online of somebody being attacked, like a, mm-hmm. a like a just a sample video, like yeah. uh, the Gracies do it a lot. Uh, I think Henner does it a lot with his wife, where like he'll he's yeah. attacking, and then mm-hmm. she shows how she would defend. Like literally, they're doing it in their bedroom and in the park and grabbing a child. And what would you do? And so she's like, "Do you think that these were like legitimate? Like a guy? Like she's like, come on, a guy, a big guy goes and attacks her. You really think she can be she can be able to defend herself?" And I said, "You don't understand. Okay, maybe she couldn't kick that guy's ass in a fight, but let me tell you something. She's going to last a little bit longer. She's going to know where to be, where to put her legs, put her hands, and also." She she's gained that woman has gained some time. Somebody with some knowledge has gained some time. Maybe she can just kick some guys ass, depending on the level. Mm-hmm. But she's gonna buy some time, know to scream, know how to handle herself, know what to grab, know what to kick, know what to you know. Again, there's some great videos that Henner does with his wife where she shows how to do like a uh, like a lapel choke by grabbing a t-shirt like if a guy's attacking you grab his t-shirt up the back like if he was on top he was attacking mm-hmm. you and it, i think it's a it's a baseball choke but yeah i do think that a woman could not only defend or submit or just last longer to get that guy away just you said before not. about your daughter like if she was walking be conscious because that, the one thing that guy fears of look most you know attackers aren't necessarily going to attack and kill you know they're going to rape they're going to uh, you know Steal a purse or whatever. Yeah, whatever. run. You know, so that person knowing, like, the surprise attack part is gone. So, you know, remembering the face, remembering how tall. They don't want that. You know, so time is their enemy. So, yeah, maybe you can buy more time. And, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. maybe they're all women. But listen, there are plenty of women out there that are either listening or that, that train that can kick a man's ass. Mm-hmm. A trained woman against an untrained man. I will put my money on the woman. That's, majority of times. Yeah. Just That's another on, thing too. If the guy, if the attacker doesn't know jujitsu, doesn't know something, do, doesn't know. But yeah, you know, then that gives it's, me a no better shit, chance sure. too. But here's what I think. You know, it's a mindset thing, right? Mm-hmm. So we talk about the sport and how to, Confidence. How to handle the sport, right? But then you also got to think, put yourself in a mindset of I want to be attacked. And I think I had this conversation with my daughter. Uh, I'm not sure what it was about, but. I told her, hey, if somebody comes at you, I'm not sure what it was. I think she said, yeah, you know, I'd push them off. I'm like, no, you got to think if somebody comes to attack you, you have to think the worst. So in thinking that the worst is going to happen to you, whatever that is, whether either they rape you or kill you, that you should put up a 100% fight. It doesn't matter if they didn't mean to touch you like that. They shouldn't have touched you from the beginning. So you mm-hmm. defend yourself to the capacity where you can leave. You're not just going to half-ass it. Right? But it has to be a mindset. You have to be ready for that. Hey, somebody's going to grab you like this. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know, it's, I think it You're going to have the adrenaline into, with it, too, but then you don't want to get sloppy like said friend doing the 90%. <laughs> you know, at least, like you said, you put yourself in bad situations that, when you train yes. so that when it does happen, you don't spaz and just move. But that's a good example, you know right? Where you got somebody move. coming at you a little bit harder than they normally would, mm-hmm. and you're able to defend them off, right? Why? Because you have the confidence that you can react to that. But somebody might not be able to react to different okay. situations, whether it's somebody bigger, smaller, a knife, a gun. Mm-hmm. You know? See, the odds are you're not going to be attacked by somebody who knows jujitsu. First of all, they would have been weeded out of jujitsu if they're well, like that true, kind of personality. There's attack. a lot of bad but, guys out there. So uh, it reminds me of the meme I posted this the other day. Uh, I think it was like from Bro Jitsu or something it's called. Um, <laughs> uh, it said like jujitsu works great until you try it against somebody who knows jujitsu. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah, know, so yeah, yeah. but that's the thing is like you don't know that person doesn't know what he doesn't know, and he doesn't know what you know. You know, unless you're walking around with a big old shirt that says, you know, I train jujitsu. But you know, if he attacks yeah. you, you're going to surprise him with grabbing an arm, and and maybe a, an arm gets caught, and you lock it, and you cause him some pain, and he says, I'm, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Right. And I think you know, yeah. Janet, what she said at the beginning of, the, of that statement was that she told her daughter not to be in her phone. Yeah. to be aware of a situation. Yeah. When you're out. That's the most yeah. important part. So it starts there, even fundamentally, like you yeah. said before. I think we talked about that. Use your voice as opposed to um, being physical, right? Yeah. You can your first use reserve. your observational skills yeah. first and sharpen those as opposed to always being on your phone. You know, I, don't, I tell her the same thing. Like if you go for a walk in the evening mm-hmm. or even if you're out with your girlfriends or whatever, pay attention to what lights are on. Take Going around the block, what neighbor has their light on? I mean, I know it's silly, but no, it's but sad it's that that's how that. you have to 
no, you I don't think, think it's, about. No, I you didn't, didn't tell her you feel like if something happened. It, like, like it would be my fault yeah. that I didn't prepare her for the world of yeah. hopefully yeah. nothing that's going to ever happen. But is this business open? Is this like a safe house that has, you know, who do you think is going to answer the door that would help you or that they would just go, nope, don't bring that drama my, here? My fiance has, has her daughter call when she walks home because we we're, we're pretty close to the school, but it's still far enough that she's worried that something mm-hmm. could happen. Uh, and there's a golf course that she can walk across or she can go around. So we're like, take the long way. There's more traffic. Mm-hmm. But they, she usually calls her. She'll call her and it's like a 15 minute walk and she, she stays on the phone. Yeah. She'll like, you know, she'll talk or she'll be working. Okay. Where are you? You're okay. I you think know, okay, you're close. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, so they'll, that. they'll do that. So, I mean, I, you know, I obviously can't do that in every situation, but you know, that's one thing that they do to, mm-hmm. to make her, it's more about making mom feel comfortable because the, because the little one is like, I don't want to, you know how 15 year olds are. You know how 15 year olds are. I know. So let's, uh, let's answer. Let's, uh, we got one more question and then we're going to wrap it up. So we've got, Chef Sopkin, I think that's the way it's supposed to be read, uh, from Instagram. Is there a limit I should put on my son's training? He loves it and wants to go more and more. I don't want him to get burned out. He's 10 years old. 10 years old. Thoughts? I think you have experience with 10-year-olds. What do you think? I say let him train. Let him train. Hmm. Let him train. 10. I, I think that... Uh, it's hard, and I and I don't know if a kid is that in tuned with his body to be like, hey, this hurts, and can you know, um, jujitsu is a serious sport. We, you know, for the people that out there that don't know, that don't train, and might be listening, you know, we f- fight, quote unquote, we fight or roll every time we train for the most part. Even the kids, mm-hmm. you're rolling, you're getting mm-hmm. you're banged up, you're rolling around. Um, I know for me, the older I, in just in my early 40s, I was training five, six days a week, two hours a day, at least for the most part when I started. And then I put a day between it. And yeah, now yeah. I'm four days a week. I try to do Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. How about we get a, so, uh, how about yeah. we get a jujitsu sports medicine guy on here? Talk about um, that stuff, I'd talk love about to do that. And I'd actually like to get a chiropractor right? on as well, because we've got some, idea. some, some training, like my back hurts questions yeah. and what should I do and what exercise should I do? So yeah. Cause that was it, what, I'm, what I'm thinking yeah. is 10 years old, they're flexible. They have extreme mm-hmm. flexibility, and they might put themselves in a situation where they they can hurt themselves. And I mean, Coach yells at Kai when he does like an inverted guard. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's, why? he, he goes tells too, him, yeah, he's, goes he too t- far back on his neck. Yeah, he goes all the way back. He tells him, hey, listen, you know, and but he that's talks your about back longevity. And neck. And, that's yeah. not so much a kid. That's no, just but in you can, general. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. Human. You can do like yeah. tight triangles or omoplatas mm-hmm. or something that you can jack your knees up. You can Yeah. Well, also, depending on how much strength that you're trying to use, it exactly. can mess with your muscles so, too. Yeah. But I think it also depends on your kid themselves too. Mm-hmm. If you have a 10-year-old that wants to go and is loving it, why are you going to – Oh, why stop them? Think about, of let, let, let me throw this out there for a second. Most sports, there's a season. We don't, don't have a she season. Does sock. We don't have a season. We're every day. That's the point. That's the long Gia story short. We don't have a season. You have Gia Nogi So you're season. training like well. if. It's <laughs> your season. If you got, we got seasons. Everyone here, if we had the time and we never got injured. We train every day. We had no jobs. We were independently wealthy. We would be training every day as long as our bodies let us. Yeah. yeah. And we'd be training every day even sometimes when our body's telling us not to. I trained today. My back was hurting. I trained. I was okay. I was able to. Okay. Feel good. Hey, well. It happens, but I'm saying a ten-year-old. You got it as the parent. You have to be conscious, but of but that. And it I does. think we're I think we're thinking the same thing. You know, ten years old, he's in school. Unless it's a summertime, he needs to be getting good grades, or he's got to be doing extra stuff. Hey, if you're able to keep your grade point average up and do all your chores, yeah, maybe you can go. You know, open mat on the weekend. And I think that's mm-hmm. a good. Alternative. Well, look, I mean, the kids now it. with with the with the open mat and the family style that we have, they, they can come to open mat on Saturdays and Sundays. I That's mean, what kids I'm saying, but I'm sure could train seven days a week now. Yeah, I would hate to say that you use that as a punishment, but I would never do that. Never right. say you yeah. can't go to jujitsu no, because you, coach says no. no. <laughs> but I would say, hey, if Bram. you're able to do more and ten years old, I'm not sure. You know, I, I there's think nothing that else that you can. His really question is, that. I don't want him to get burned out. So should I yeah. should I be careful about how much he trains? My in my opinion, it's just my opinion. I haven't coached kids since for, for at least two years, and that was for a short oh, amount of time. Would I would say, look, let, let's you know keep an eye on him. If he you, if he says he hurt he's he's hurt or he's hurt his ankle, look, you could take time. You could take time off the mat at ten mm-hmm. at ten years old. You could take a little time off the mat. But kids' classes aren't five days a week, are they? Yeah. 
They are, are. but for the most part, the younger kids, they'll do two to three times a week. Sometimes four if they end up showing up Saturday morning for the um, family style. But for the most part, it's two to three times. The older kids, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, they can come as much as they Mm -hmm. want. Okay. I kind of think of this as a two-part thing. If you're talking about just being burnt out, I mean, we all have our plateaus. We all have our days where we don't want to go, and then you want to go. You're fired up. You're not. Mm -hmm. That's just not only physical, but that's a mental state as well. If he's fired up now, then, you know, let him go. If he's worried as far as physical, like you said, if you're worried, take him to the doctor. Even just your your regular physician for, you know, mm-hmm. for him, hey, as far as a 10-year-old's body, they'll know the weight, the height, you know, what can he handle, what can he not. And then from there, if you need to go to a sports doctor, yeah. a chiropractor, whatever. Well, with, with this too, like but I would that say. that might be help though to have the doctor talk to him and say, hey, here are your limitations as a 10-year-old. You're still growing. You still have at least, you know, eight more years. For, for guys, right? If yeah. Maybe a little bit less, but still, you know. I would think, though, I, I would say, I'm kind of rethinking what I said in that when I do see the kids roll, they don't let the kids roll like like the adults roll. You know, where... That's true. Where right, we're trying to murder each other in yeah. some cases. Mm-hmm. You know, the kids are definitely held back from like, hey, well, you know, hey, mm-hmm. not so aggressive. The only time you know, that so they ever not. let them roll super hard is when they do super fights. Yeah. And they take turns as far as... And there's usually just one, maybe two... In a At the class, end of class, like though, and it's even a shorter time. And it's even usually the the, the older. It's it's typically probably not going to be ten year olds, right? They're going to be no. Like they'll do teens. well. I mean, like I said, they have the two different classes. They have the younger kids. They have the older kids. They'll have them roll their regular rolls, two, three, maybe four, depending on time. And then sometimes we'll do a super fight. It's just one, one fight, like two mm-hmm. people, one fight. Mm-hmm. Whereas, say the five year old roll is three minutes for super fight. It's two. Okay. For the older kids, and they're going hard. And yes. They can go hard. Okay. But, I mean, you still have yeah. Felipe, Sofia, me, and Flo's Standing eyeballs are all right there. All right. But I think, too, and, I think, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to No, I was just going to say, for the for the older kids, their roles are four-minute super fights or three minutes. Okay. And, again, we're right there watching. And, and all of their roles, whether it be regular or the super fight, if we're watching and we see they have that submission, we tap, tap, tap. You're done. Yeah, Start see, again. We're not having oh, that, I didn't so have that, it. It this wasn't is tied. <laughs> I'm tapping for you. You know, yeah. because like you said, whereas we go a lot more, we're actually going for that submission and I'm not gonna let it go until you tap because that's what you're learning. Yeah. The kids yeah, it's toned down okay. a little All bit. All right, so there you go. But I think there's because you, you definitely touched on it. Burned out is and I I'm just gonna take this space of the conversation, is less to do with physicality and more to do with what you talked about, the mental state, right? And I think when, because I, I, I've known two kids in my life, well, they were adults when I knew them, but they were high competitive uh, field and track, and one was a swimmer, high competitive swimmer. And they, you, when I, by the time I met them, you couldn't put them in front of a track or a swimming pool because they got so burned out, right? Because it became more important to the parents than it became to them. Okay. I think, I think when, Jiu-jitsu, and I'll just use jiu-jitsu because that was a question, but it could be any sport. You can put it in any sport. When jiu-jitsu becomes more important to you as the parent or the kid is now falling almost kind of like serving a schedule tournament competitions mm-hmm. because maybe he shows a talent for it. And now you're putting him tournament after tournament. You know, I think when it becomes more important to end it to anybody else than the kid, that's when the burnout possibility is, is there. As long right. as the kid is, to your point again, on fire for it, just let him do it. And then you know what? Again, to your point, Janet was just making a lot of good points that I was completely <laughs> agreeing with. Side. If the kid is burned out, let him be burned out. Let him leave it. Um, Machado's son, right, who's a high level black belt now, burned out when he was 14 and left it for years and didn't get back into it till he was like 16, 17, 18. Um, and now he's a high level black belt, but he he left it for years because he got burned out. And Machado, of all people, just let him. Just oh, go do what you want. Then you know, well, I think that I think there's value in that, that too. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, we're at about a, a, an hour and twenty. We're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, I'm gonna do a little housekeeping here. Uh, so uh, uh, again, thank you to everybody for listening. That was right? a great show. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you very much. Show. I appreciate you getting a little personal there. Like I said, I've danced around it a little bit in the past because I didn't wasn't oh, sure if you no, wanted to talk like about it. it. I like talking about uh, me. And, and I'll, uh, <laughs> <laughs> me too. So next time it's next time it's all heart attacks. <laughs> uh, we'll just so, leave. We'll let you <laughs> so uh, so uh, the uh, the questions that we answered today, everybody's going to get a fifty dollar uh, coupon code for. Thank you guys for the questions. Yeah, Great nice. questions. Thank you. Nice. Great uh, you, questions. Yeah. You'll uh, get that $50 coupon for chokeresponsibly.com. Um, again, as always, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. You can submit questions whenever you want. Uh, if it's something you want to get answered now on social media, you can send it through. Let me know. Hey, can I get an answer on this now? Because sometimes I just automatically assume that the question is for the show. Uh, so I wait. Uh, and sometimes I want to answer them right there. Like, hey, this is my advice. This sounds important. Let me do, you know, let's talk. But, um, you know, as at Jujitsu Dummies on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, hit us up. Uh, YouTube, uh, it's it's Jujitsu Dummies podcast, and uh, you know, like, comment, subscribe. Um, All those things know, help us out. Yeah, tell uh, Junior how how much you love his mohawk. Wh whatever you want, you it's can do it in amazing. the comments. Say, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. I can't um, wait to roll with you again. <laughs> now that you have this. I'm excited. Wait, can I revel like good luck? Wait till it's long. Uh, so let's uh, just uh, real quick uh, give your in, you know give your Instagram handle. Uh, where can people you find can you? You can catch me on Instagram at Raul Benton Junior at J Vega Junior. Okay, Janet at Janet underscore JJ. No. Is it? No, no. Janet. <laughs> I don't know. It'll be on this. Somewhere. <laughs> it's It'll on the here. screen. It's, it's right, here. right there. Right there. Like can you make, can make, you make sure, sure it's this right whole there. time that we're going like this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am uh, Uncle uh, at Uncle Milty. <laughs> now, uh, you say I'm Janet. <laughs> at Uncle Milty BJJ is my personal, and again, I'm answering most of the stuff on social media. Uh, so uh, if you hit me up at, at Jujitsu Dummies, uh, I'm going to answer you there as well. Uh, big shout out to Choke Responsibly, 10% off of coupon code uh, Dummies Pod Five. Hell some yeah! Church, right? 10%. Uh, you said right. Yeah. 10%. 10%. Ten. Just want to be sure. 10%. That's not right. Fi not 15. Don't go look for 15, folks. Not yet. If you not want yet. 15, uh, Junior will send you, give you the refund. <laughs> He'll send it to you. Um, we'll work on that. 10% uh, off with coupon code DUMMIESPOD5. Fight back CBD. You can get 15% uh, off there. He's a he's six. a big. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Pod5. Well, you'll still get it. But it's uh, DUMMIESPOD6. Thank you, Janet. Uh, fight back CBD. Coupon code JJD, you get 15% off. Uh, thank you to our show patrons, again, CJ Carroll, uh, Chuck Reddor, James, again, who introduced us, James Fisher, who introduced us to, uh, to Fight Pack CBD. Thank you. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, check out Mission 22 and Mission22.com. They do some great things for veterans. And if you want to get a shout-out like that on the show, beginning and end, uh, go to our website, jujitsudummies.com. Uh, go click on the patrons slash sponsor section. And for as little as five dollars a month, we'll shout you out. Either you, your gym. There's some other packages where you can get a, a, a T-shirt every month. We'll send you a coupon code for a T-shirt once a month. So every time uh, Choke Responsibly puts something out, uh, you can get one of those, not just a podcast uh, shirt. Uh, we've got the new uh, bags, swag. stickers, new swag on uh, on ChokeResponsibly.com. Just look for the podcast tab in the menu. Uh, but uh, other than that, thank you guys. We Great love show. you. Keep yeah. listening. You know, uh, we'll see you next time. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs>